Uh, thank you, Concordia. I'd say there's not a, a small town or a small business anywhere in Ireland that this isn't their, their, their topic at the moment, the whole issue of uh, commercial rates. Uh, the business world asks why should one of the most productive elements in our society be so unjustly responsible for the upkeep and maintenance of what's left of local government. And I won't spend too much time giving a history lesson, and I know that Deputy Boyd uh, Barrett uh, so gallantly refused to have a go at Fianna Fáil about it, but I'm not going to do the same. Um, it was the Fianna Fáil government in 1977 which landed business and enterprise into the unjust position it is in today, and that's a reality we should never forget. They not only ruined the most essential public service needed by every man, woman and child in this country, but damaged it to a condition from which it has never fully recovered. And we must never, ever allow that short-term political abuse to occur in this country ever again. My good friends in the party opposite, you were also responsible for the most recent Alice in Wonderland solution of part funding local services from development levies during the so-called housing boom. In the same way that Fianna Fáil mortgaged the whole country to foreign bankers, you also mortgaged local government and we know how that's all ended up in tears and we're all paying the price for it was primarily set up to simply assist in the distribution of funds raised and granted in a fair and equitable way to fund local community needs. That is it, plain and simple. It was the business community itself which created the noble concept of local government to address its needs for public roads, footpaths, lights and to provide homestead comforts. Uh, it is therefore ironic that the same business fraternity who sets up a funded local services system in the first place, are now hard done by. Uh, we owe to the public to underpin the preservation of essential public services by spreading the bill on those who can afford it. We have to do everything possible here in our national parliament to rescue this precious resource, which has so painfully been built up over the centuries. In this stall, we have a clear duty to respond with courage and leadership to ensure that the constant response of local government is there when it is needed. In a natural emergency, a fire, water supply interruptions are simply in response to everyday needs that local mm. councils provide 365 days of the year. And we all remember last year, so we do. Um, of course, the public have to be wary of those who use the local council system as a stepping stone to becoming TDs, and then when they get into this chamber, uh, use it to make uh, populist um, statements to chambers of commerce about a blanket reduction in commercial rates. This short-term fantasy land politics is an insult to people's intelligence, and especially to those who are paying the rates, and leads to a very weak local government system. Now is the time for, res for responsible collective thinking on how we should spread the burden of paying for essential public services by a direct, fair and sustainable system of taxation. Now is the time when we can genuinely, genuinely assist the business community rather than allow it to be used as political fodder as it is in this House tonight. In all of the successful alternatives operated in other countries, there is relief or abatement to those who merit such consideration. We should be able to recognise fairness. Surely it is possible for the Valuations Office in a small country like ours to devise a fair, up-to-date valuation of commercial and industrial properties as laid down by statute. We have to ensure that the Valuation Office continues to be independent of sectoral influence and in turn does not act either for the local authority. This private member's motion has to be challenged because it is a cynical sham by those who continue to be afflicted by a selective political amnesia. Thank you.